Now that our control object is correctly hearing what our sequences are saying, we can enact some actual control over them. Just like we did before with our uh, parent item object and our player, we're going to use states to control what happens when a sequence is playing or when it stops. So let's go to our control object and let's create a new event. I'll click add event, step, and just choose the regular step event. I'll make this full screen and I'm just gonna add a quick comment. And I'll paste in a code block and explain. We've seen this many times before. Now this is yet another switch function. And what we're actually checking is sequence state. So in the broadcast messages event, we were changing sequence state depending on whether we noticed that a sequence was playing and whether it had started or whether it ended. So we're just continuing our work with that here. If a sequence is playing, if seq state dot playing is the current um, value of a sequence state, then we're going to remove control from the player. And then if the sequence is finished playing, we're going to do a couple things. First, we're going to double check and see that the sequence does exist. So we're checking for current sequence on the current sequence layer. And if those things exist, then we are destroying that sequence. Since our sequences all fade in and fade out, you're not going to notice that they're being destroyed. If they were still visible when we ran this, it would look like they're just cut off from the game. Next, we're restoring control to the player like we've done before, and we're resetting these two variables. So in our control object in game start, we always set sequence state to not playing, and we set the current layer to none and the current sequence to none. At this point, we're resetting sequence state back to not playing. And then we are resetting current uh, uh, CUR SEQ to no one. Now, we're not resetting the layer because that's the layer we're always going to be playing sequences on. That's totally fine. But you can see how the loop works here. So to test this, let's go ahead, run our game again. And I'm just going to put myself in a specific spot so I know where I am, right above it, right in front of the cabbage. And we'll press S. And while the sequence is playing, I'm just going to try to mash my keys and try to move around. So as you can see, I was not able to go anywhere, which is good. That means that that's working. It removed control for me while the sequence is playing. But now that the sequence is gone and been destroyed, my control is back. So we've now learned how to create sequences and control them with a test key, so we're ready to move on.